Hi guys, back again. Another message for Iran. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. This is uh, primarily uh, what is confusing the masses in the Christian world, which is all Zionist. And um, what we have is the 2300 days of Daniel. Now, it's not in the Quran. And you've got to ask yourself why. Because it should be. However, we're going to read through it and um, start at the start of probably the best place, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, you can get into that, darling, and we'll jump in there if we. Okay. Now, the following is the area in square kilometres from the South Pole to the solar eclipse that occurred on January the 25th, 1944, it measuring 8,888.8 miles to Yahweh's birth crib, where he lived until he was 942 days old. And from the South Pole to the November 14, 2012 eclipse, it measuring 942 miles from the same crib. The area in square kilometres is the same number as the height of the pyramid up to the rejected capstone. Now just quoting from John 21, 25. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written, every one I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be okay, written. Now, just in case you're a little bit confused there, this here is a 25 degree latitude. That's because it's the pyramid is 25 years wide providing the 913106 pyramid inches on each side totals 3652424 two, now what's happened is uh, this has been rejected out of all prophecy or even though it's in the book of Isaiah uh, which is not in the Quran um, and it's saying that the pillar here is the altar to the Lord in the midst of Egypt so the capstone is missing the reason it's missing is because when they laid it out they reduced the size by 286.1. Now, 286 is lamb in the Greek concordance. So, what we have is a 25 degree latitude there. Okay. And the distance from a solar eclipse that occurred along the 25 degree latitude, and we do it on the 25 because it's predicted by the pyramid to do so. And that distance to where I was reborn is 8,888.8 miles. This one here is 942 miles. This is the south latitude of 25 degrees. So eclipses we measure pyramid-wise from the 25 degrees south or 25 degrees north and where the moon catches up with the sun and passes it, we can calculate it exactly within a few metres. So what we've done here is taken that eclipse point there, that eclipse point there, 942 miles from where I was born, and that's how many times the word Jesus is found in the New Testament and several other things, to the South Pole. So the area within this is 45454 4, 4 square kilometres. Now, up to the missing capstone here, rejected capstone, because when it showed up, it's too big, meaning no one believed it was ever going to show up, because here I am looking at you. That height is 4545 4, 5 feet above the baseline. So therefore, we have an area that's in here. This is done with Magellan um, Map Send Light. Uh, it is available. You can get it directly from uh, Magellan. And uh, you can put those coordinates in because they're easy um, to find. However, I can give them to you if you need them. So that is that area. From there to there, South Pole, back up, is the same number as that there. You have to clear that up. Now, I've, I've said this before, and I have to say it again because it's history. Uh, many people will be watching this for the first time. So what we have then is the distance from where I was born, which was a Catholic hospital, uh, St. Margaret's Maternity, uh, to the South Pole is 3877 miles. And with the original King James Bible, and they've all been changed, I can assure you it's going to be a hard time to find this, but we have the copy of the original on, on uh, CD. So you can get a copy of that from us. It is 3877 miles, which is how many times the word God is found in total 
of the King James 1611 Bible before they altered it. Now, as I lived in the house um, with my parents until I was 940 days old, the address is important. Born into the heart of Hill, 105 Rothschild Avenue. Uh, hello. In Rosebury, which was the husband of the richest woman, a Rothschild, that became Prime Minister of England. So you can see how the corruption spread into it. So here I am, Rothschild Avenue, Roseberry. There's the two most evil people. So the area between the two locations and the pole, which I'm going to show you now, the one is 387577 miles to the South Pole. The other one where I was born is uh, 3875, and here it is here. So what we've done is we've calculated the area. This is slowly tapered together to hit at the South Pole, and we have an internal size of 942. Uh, I think that's what kilometers or square miles. There's your 942 number. The 3875 is Comforter, which is God in the flesh, come to the earth as the Holy Ghost of Jesus, Yahweh, who was the soul of Jesus in the first place. So we have to clear that up. Okay, darling, go on. <laughs> hmm? Would it not be reasonable to assume we are all in hell? The Christian world is divided into 36,000 different denominations and Yahweh is totally rejected by every church. All are Freemason, including the Vatican. For decades he has revealed genetic factors of his family and as they are all of the true royal family, the key of the house of David has to be the most royal man alive and he also is rejected by his own family as being a highly intelligent genius, then he must be mad. There is a stupidity about uh, people that aren't too bright and they say, oh, if he's a genius, he's got to be mad. Yeah. So um, this is why I've had to experience all this because not even my own family would believe it. But the key of the house of David is Isaiah 22, 22, not in the Quran, and it's saying that the key is something that is genetic. Now the Quran was begun by the angel Gabriel talking to Muhammad. His descendants, minor prophets, contributed to its formation. However, most were beheaded or hanged. And then, like the Bible, Rome organised the manipulation. And today we have Saudi Arabia beheading women, cutting off limbs, and our Muslim Zionists, if caught distributing a Bible or a New Testament, severe penalties, jail, hanging, Beheading, if you're an Arab, the same in Israel. Apart from that, they're lovely people. Now Daniel was spoken <sighs> to by God, who is, by Gabriel, who is the angel of God. He is Yahweh's angel. In the book of Daniel, he predicts by the hand of Daniel the 2300 day and the 70 week prophecy. It predicts King Cyrus of Persia would build the temple to Yahweh in Jerusalem, which began after a long period of resistance by the non-Yahweh priests, as they were invaders forbidden by Moses to enter the land of the Canaanites, the area being the holy lands of the Torah and its offspring, the New Testament. The land of the Canaanites worshipped Asherah and Yahweh. The Mishnah of Babylon and Galilee is today the Talmud and behind it the Zionist learned elders of Zion. The Holy Land was taken away from Israel by Moses. If you read Deuteronomy 32, 16 through to verse 30, it is a complete and utter rejection by the God of Moses. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods and with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them 
because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn until the lowest hell and, cons and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of grey hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord has not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Moses had led them for 40 years until finally he stood overlooking the Holy Land and he forbade them from crossing the Jordan. But they did and thus started the abominations leading to all the evils of Solomon, intermarried with the descendants of Lot via incest, receiving 666 talents of gold per annum. And in the previous condemnation of Israel, we find the 666th time the word God is mentioned. The land of the Canaanites worshipped Asherah and Yahweh. The Mishnah of Babylon and Galilee is today the Talmud, and behind it is the Zionist learned elders of Zion. The Holy Land was taken away from Israel by Moses. Today the area is the abomination of desolation, crushing Palestinians in their homes as false Jews, Israel. Its tanks flatten hundreds of villages, yet not one Christian nation stands up against Israel. All are Freemasonry. They preach the Zionist Bible, which is dominated by the Torah, and its offspring, the New Testament, supporting the devil's own. What is overlooked is the books missing in the Aramaic, Peshitta, the New Testament. It has the word for God, pronounced Allah, but spelled O-L-H, from Matthew 5.33. Your oath to Yahweh but shall be complete, complete or fulfilled. In your oath you shall, what it's saying is, you shall not make an oath. You shall complete your oath to Yahweh but you shall not lie and you shall not, those in the past have been said to you, have you heard again? This is reading it backwards. Mm, of course. <laughs> again, heard have you said, been had it that past in, in those two, not, let me read it back. <laughs> well, it's, it's supposed to be the other way around. There it is. There. There. It's okay. I've, I've, I've placed it back. Oh, all right. Okay, there we go. So there's two references that Jesus speaking. He's talking to the Lord and the, the, the translation of it is Yahweh when he's talking to Lord as, as the Lord, capital L. But then he talks about the God of heaven. It belongs to God. That word is Allah, pronounced Allah. It is spelled in Aramaic O-L-H and pronounced Allah. Now the word, the word God is not a name. It's a title. Much like the captain of a ship or the CEO of a company, it is a job description. It is not a personal name. 
What the Jews do not want to say is the name. The name is Yahweh. It continues saying of the past, but not in the future. The name will be corrupted and rejected. They removed it a very, very long time ago and replaced in their text with G-D, which means nothing because it's just a title or a, a, a job description. Now the stone which the builders refused has become the head of the corner. That's a reference to Psalm 118, verse 22. The Great Pyramid. Yes, it's a reference to the Great Pyramid, the stone being the capstone. So in Aramaic it says the, the Great Pyramid itself as uh, referring to the stone of the corner, the head of the corner, the same the head of the pyramid. Hmm. Now, let's get into the uh, 70 weeks and the 230 days of Daniel. And for you people in Islam, uh, this is what the book of Daniel is all about. But uh, because they are not uh, of God, they don't know how to interpret it. Okay, so there are 70 weeks and 2300 days of Daniel. The 70 weeks pertains to the Messiah back on the earth and the 2300 days represents 2300 years. The West have totally consumed the Aramaic Bible and which is called the Peshitta. It has the false prophet Paul all the way through it and there is no Daniel in the Old Testament. Also in the Quran, there's no Isaiah, there's no Daniel or Jeremiah. And they all predict King Cyrus, who authorised and financed the building of the temple of the God of Daniel, which was Yahweh. Aramaic, O-L-H, read from right to left and pronounced Allah, the one God. Therefore, all non-Persian Arabic nations would prefer to ignore the Persians today being Shiite of Iran, which is also dominated by the Quran, similar, but also missing is the book of Daniel, which is Aramaic. Now, the majority of scholars studying the book of Daniel and the book of Re Revelation agree that 70 weeks and 2300 days of Daniel point to 457 BC but they have no idea when the 70 weeks representing 70 Hebrew years begin. Why? The 70 weeks pertains to the Messiah back on the earth and the 2300 days represents 2300 years. Scholars add 2300 years to 457 BC and they arrive at 1844, a time when Christians worldwide thought he would descend on a white horse. Now the brick wall they run into is because their obsessions are of Christianity, all of which are Zionist Freemasons, the Bible. Therefore, via ignorance of the Aramaic Daniel, they, like intellectual lemmings, stampede the masses off a high cliff into Sheol. Isn't there something about the demons going into pigs and they 2,000 of them and go into the Yes, the sea? legion. Mm -hmm. Legion. That's what that is. Okay. Parable, right? Mm. Everything's told you in marshals because the word parable means marshal. I thought you might like that. <laughs> now, Yahweh will show uh, that reading the stars with modern global positioning satellite, GPS software, accurate to within a few feet. It reveals the real Bible, which is the Earth and the Great Pyramid. That's why they altered Google Earth. They knew I was onto it. Hmm. Now the altar to the Lord is Isaiah 19, verses 19 and 20. Now those two verses combined have a gematria, which is the height of the altar up to the rejected capstone, 454.54 feet or 5448.736 pyramid inches. And that's the number in Hebrew gematria consisting of 30 words. Now to convert that, what you do is you take the 5448.736 and you want feet or inches and then you can divide it by 12 to get feet. You multiply that number by 1.00106. That was changed uh, in the time of the reign of Elizabeth I because they knew 
the pyramid was an altar to the Lord, and they were, of course they were demons, they wanted to take the mind of the masses away from that. Mm. Now, pyramidologists, many of them have gone to Egypt to disprove what many writers had already stated about the pyramid, that it was the altar to the Lord. Now, they themselves have only had to walk away amazed by its accuracy and conclude that it was not built by the Egyptians. However, all media only allows movies to air that say that it was built as a tomb by Egyptians. Since all media is owned by the Zionist Jews, and since they are Satanists, they must use subterfuge language. In other words, they reverse the truth. You could take, <coughs> talk to all the top rabbis in the world and give them this information I've given you over the years and ask them, is, is this man the Messiah? They say, no. Subterfuge language, they are saying, yes, he is. So the power behind all media, including religions, must be the nature of the end time be of the devil. Therefore, no religion escapes it. Dominated by the same devils of the 12 tribes of Israel that Moses forbade to enter the Canaanite land of Yahweh and Asherah and must reject any proof that the Messiah has come proclaiming that he is the Messiah of Moses. Do not make a railing accusation about the body of Moses. Now, Protocol 14 of the Learned Elders of Zion states, We shall forbid Christ. Now, is it not obvious mentioning Christ is a major mistake? Forbidding the true God is an admission. The Messiah must be real. They convinced of it and dominate all media, religions, and are laughing at you as they use your donations to slaughter Palestinians while the Freemason pulpits, pulpits pass the hat for more donations. That's aimed at the Christian Western countries. The Palestinians, who were always in the land of Canaan, cry out for the world. Their Arab neighbours, all subject to the same devils, Moses forbade to enter the Israelite. Quoting, this is from Isaiah. In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors and he shall send them a saviour and a great one and he shall deliver them. These verses have a value of 5448 and is the height of the structure, the pyramid, up to the rejected capstone. Converted to feet, you've got 455.45. Uh, four, four, five feet. <coughs> now, for those of you who are familiar with the masonry layers, each representing a solar eclipse, 202 of them starting <coughs> at March the 17th, 1923, ending at November the 14th, 2012, a total of 202 with 131 lunar eclipses equals 333 moon-related solar or lunar eclipses. Now from 1944, 153 solar and 99 lunar eclipses. We have the 153 fish. They are solar eclipses after Yahweh was born up to the last, the 153rd, and the 99 lunar, the last lunar, was on June the 4th, 2012, and the last solar will be November 14th, 2012. They are 163 days apart, which is 0.4462 years, and is Rabboni, quoting, Jesus say unto her, and it was Martha, not Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Look at it from this point of view. Here's Asherah at the cross, Martha, and her husband dies. She's pregnant. The line has to be continued. Her husband's gone. What a terrible thing to see him bled to death in this terrible torture. 
And then he shows up in the garden. Now, what's the garden? I was conceived on Gardner's Road and went to Gardner's Road School. And you can see how that for every opportunity that was, the angels had put this all together. So it's such a wonderful thing. And uh, it cannot be denied. This is what happened. I didn't, certainly didn't talk to Mary. Mary was responsible for the bloody cross. So two or solar eclipses occurred in 1944, January 25th and July the 20th, with my parents married on in 1934, trying to hide the um, conception of my brother, which was uh, on the front door of my grandfather's house on the gas meter, apparently. And um, this made him illegitimate. So she changed the uh, January to uh, July to January, making him trying to make him legal. The decree of Cyrus to build a temple to Yahweh was forgotten until 457 BC, and in that year we have the, the uh, same date as the solar eclipse of January the 25th, 1944, being January the 25th, 457 BC. So we have the answer. The 2300 days of Daniel. In the Old Testament, there are 19 verses that mention Cyrus, most of which concerns the rebuilding of the temple for Yahweh. Daniel is shown the end time, the 2300 days, or 2300 years. A solar eclipse occurred on January the 25th in 457 BC, when the Julian day number was 1554514. Add 2300 years and it arrives at January the 11th, 1984. Sorry, 1844. Now you've got to take into consideration that the church altered the days. So uh, we'll just take it back to January the 25th and we don't have to worry about the days being altered by the Vatican. So then add the base of the altar to the Lord, which is 100 years. So what we have then is January the 11th or 25th. 1944, my rebirth date, or the solar eclipse number, the JD Julian Day 4514 in Hebrew means a lock to shut up. Now that is direct uh, reference to Isaiah 22, 22, 23, where uh, it's the key of the house of David, and he shall open and none shall shut, he shall shut and none shall open. Daniel 12:4. but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Well, that's exactly what we've got today. So, only the Messiah is ordained to open it. Okay, so Daniel has shown the end time, the 2300 days, 2300 years, as a solar eclipse on January uh, occurred on January the 25th, 457, and the first 14 days after Yahweh was reborn, so it was January the 25th, 1944. Now the lunatics of 1844 sold everything and waited for the imaginary rapture. Therefore, from the 36,524.24 pyramid inch base perimeter, which is 100 years, being the full size as laid out on the corner sockets, then moved inward, reducing the base by 286.1 pyramid inches. It meant that the capstone representing Yahweh was too large by 286.1 pyramid inches, and so the capstone was rejected, which is a prophecy of today. The capstone, Lord God Almighty, the returned Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh, is rejected. Okay, the 286, 1 is espousal, but the 286 is lamb and 1 is alpha, which is God. Father. Right? In Hebrew or Greek, the first word is the Father. So we have the 286.1. Now this is a star that's right bes beside the uh, polar star, and it's YBS 286. In fact, when you open up the uh, programs, you've got the polar star that comes up in writing. And right underneath it, where you can't see it, purposely, I'm sure, is the YBS 286. It's right beside it. So, just a bit more of the subterfuge of the Jews. 
Now the 50th layer of the pyramid is the floor of the king's chamber. So the solar eclipse of January the 25th, 1944, occurred 14 days later. It is represented by the 50th layer. At the same date in 457 BC, the location of the eclipse was the latitude and longitude shown on the screen. Down by Antarctica. Yahweh has the three latitudes and longitudes to help you find it in either Magellan GPS or Google Earth software. Um, yeah, Yahweh avoids Google Earth. It's, uh, well, what the Google Earth thing. tells you is it's wrong. So whatever you measure, you know it's going to be wrong. So we then have to convert it, which is takes a, it's time consuming because I then have to take the same coordinates and put it in, into one of several of the Magellan software and that'll give you the exact distance right to within a few feet. So uh, it's interesting to see how stupid they are, but I can't expect all you people to run out there and start using Google Earth because you'll get consumed by it. Um, you have to get your scholars to either contact me or buy the software off Magellan. So as I said, the uh, Magellan, of course, everything on the Earth is trying to stop me. So the measurements in the Northern Hemisphere, they have, because I've corrected them three times now and done videos about it, they keep on closing it down. But they got to a point now where it is real accurate uh, in the Northern Hemisphere within, say, three or four hundred metres over a couple of hundred uh, kilometres. And uh, so therefore it is reasonable. However, I just do it and then check it out with the uh, uh, Magellan software. Now I did the other day, I put up the uh, location of where I was born in Bethlehem and how to find it with mathematics. And the distance is 433 uh, kilometres from the Great Pyramid to the uh, actual birthplace. And uh, when I did it with the um, Magellan, it's the same number, so that's all right. So the distance is the same number as the height of the pyramid up to the rejected capstone representing myself 454.54. And as I showed you before, the area of the first, which I'll go back to when we get to the end of it. But here it is, I've enlarged it so you can see it. I've confirmed it. And uh, the 4545.65 nautical miles from the South Pole to the house where I was born that's uh, accurate. So in 453 BC, Exodus, the Persian king, was pleased to issue the, an edict giving encouragement to many Jews in exile to return to the holy city of Jerusalem. This marked the date of the rebuilding of the temple, not to rebuild the devil's temple of Solomon, of course, but the God of Daniel, Yahweh. This is why, as Jesus said, my father's house, John 2.16, and said, unto them that sold doves. Get out of here, you bunch of thieving bastards, basically. Yeah. The regathered people in Jerusalem, back from exile in Babylon, longed to see Judah regathered as an independent, sovereign people. They dreamed of the day that Jerusalem would be restored to its former glory. The third return under Ezra to Jerusalem in 457 BC was certainly a joyous occasion. It reignited their longings. The good news was announced. The decree of Cyrus had been confirmed, marked the date when the priests could begin designing and organising workers for the temple. On January 25th, 457 BC, a solar eclipse occurred thousands of miles away. Only God knows, one could say, and he does. So he reveals it now. Now the temple was delayed from being rebuilt because the Babylonian uh, Pharisees and Sadducees which studied the Mishnah and the Galilean Talmud which is basically two different uh, abominations. Um, you can read that on the internet today and you can look up uh, the uh, elders of Zion and all that kind of thing and the abominations they talk about is just unbelievable. That'd be, to even put it down in writing is amazing for me. However, um, because of the constant harassment and uh, the uh, priesthood, they stopped the building until 457 BC. And then they got the go ahead because by that time they had lost the, uh, the permission of the Persians. So they had to go and talk to the Persians to get it back. Now they were quite a way away. 
So uh, when they did that. Now the distance from the Great Pyramid to the city where the decree was found is the actual same number as the diagonal of the Great Pyramid in feet. So we have uh, in uh, miles 1077.26 miles. That's over a thousand miles from the pyramid to where the decree was. So from the 25th of January 457 BC, eclipse to Jerusalem is 7149 nautical miles, which is Aramaic for the word is city. And from 7151, same building in the sense of flooring city, from 7136, Quara, to bring about, to impose timbers, roof or floor, to make beams, send good speed, come to pass. So from the 25th of January 457 BC to the eclipse of the 25th of January 1944, so we've got one in the Antarctica and one on the 25 degree latitude, which is 8,888 8, miles to my crib. That distance is 6666 and that lines up with the total uh, Lord count, verse total for the 1611 KJV Bible and 6666 Shurat or verses from the uh, Quran. So we have the 1944 location to my group is 888 and down to the first solar eclipse in 457 BC, 6666. Not that hard, is it? <laughs> so using Magellan maps and light is the one you can uh, get hold of through Magellan and any city in the world should be able to find it. We can place the coordinates and it will give us the area within the several points. In the next slide, the area of the four solar eclipses of 457 BC and the one January 25th, 1944. So the five eclipses have in area 34784910. Now 4910 is Mashal in Hebrew. Uh, you look at that uh, Genesis 49.10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes, that's Christ. And the distance around the five sides is 1888.1. Now, I could have cheated there and put an extra 8 in, but I didn't. I don't like doing that. 348, 3478 Greek is Nazareth, and 3478 Hebrew is Israel. And uh, as I mentioned, if you haven't watched the other slides, or the other previews, rather, and so forth, um, this is the Commonwealth card that was set up in Australia to, um, for the Commonwealth of Australians. But it was, of course, taken over by the Jews and sold on the stock market. So that number to open that up, Issued by the Commonwealth Bank two years ago is that same number, 3478. So if you happen to find it on the street, you can go get some cash out the wall. I'll give you the number. You've got no chance of getting out of my pocket. I'm a Jew after all. Keep okay. On. John 1 45. Philip findeth Nathaniel and said unto him, saith unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, 3478, the son of Joseph. In Greek, Nazareth is the guarded one. And there is another translation. Another way of saying it. Yeah. The ordinary residence and hometown of Christ. Now, I'm just going to show this one here. We've got four sockets underneath the Great Pyramid. These are chiseled into the uh, surface of these um, holy polished stones. And uh, here's one that's been removed over here. So what you have is the distance 3652424 and this one here beside this last one, which is the southeast socket. That one there. That represents January the 25th, 1940. That's how the numbers all fit together. There's the length of all of these sides. Goes out like that, across there, back to here. So we start from there. We go across to the second. This is uh, June the 22nd. This is uh, July uh, the 21st. This is uh, December the 16th, all 457 BC. Then up to that point, which is 888, the red line, 0.8 miles to where I was born. And this one down from here, that eclipse date, to that eclipse date is a distance of 6666 nautical miles. That's your Lord number. We have 49.10 in Hebrew, which is Marshall. So you'd read 49.10, 11 and 12. That should give you the idea of what's happening there. And um, where are we at? 
Right. So the area within the five sides is Israel. Now five is father in Greek. So that goes from two and from one, depending on whether you look in Hebrew or Greek, but it ends up with one as being a father, Alpha. In Hebrew and Nazareth, in the Greek, it calls its numbers. So the distance from the 25th January 457 BC to the January 25th is 6666, and then we have the other one, there's 8888. Just do the maths. You've met, you're all Arabs, you can do this kind of thing. Uh, and of course, the uh, Persians have already done it. They're way ahead of you. The date Lieutenant Cook sighted a comet sailing back to New Zealand from his uh, uh, attempt to um, uh, watch for the crossing of the um, surface of the sun by Venus, which is the morning star, um, that will be given Jesus. So they thought that uh, Jesus was going to show up when the Venus crossed over because it's quite a rare event. So when we add 8888 days to that, it ends up my 69th birthday and my granddaughter will be 8.888 years old, born on the 21st of February 2004. New Zealand itself sits between latitudes which Cook measured with his astronomers and uh, determined with a Harrison clock, which is also my relative who designed it and built it. Um, it was confiscated by the Admiralty. I tried to rip him off at 20,000 pounds. Uh, man on board the ship with Cook was named Green. He was the head astronomer of uh, the Greenwich and he took um, the case to uh, King George III, who was very interested in this sort of stuff, and um, he made the Parliament pay the £20,000, huge amount of money, to John Harrison for doing it, and that's my grandmother's name. So we go down. Now, 69 years is 70 Hebrew years at 360 days, and uh, we have 70 Hebrew years back to my rebirth date, January 11, 1944, Confirmed by 457, blah, 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 and 1944. The scholars of the Old Testament, the New Testament and the Quran having been blinded and consumed by the Jews and Freemasonry. I mean, you should be, you Arabs should be so fucking pissed off that these Jews have done it to you, right? You run around bloody putting women in all sorts of uh, fear and terror, Ooh. reciting this fucking Quran over and over again, when in fact it's in the numbers and you're not smart enough to be able to work it out. But... Thankfully, the Persians are. So you're all devoured by the same devil Moses had banned the 12 tribes of Israel from crossing the Jordan into the land of the Yahweh, Ashra, Canaanites, the home of the Palestinians today. And that's why they're butchering these people and you're letting that happen. Well, Iran ain't going to let it happen anymore. So there's your dates. Below that is off the internet. It gives you the longitude and latitudes. There's the HTP number. Get your uh, map sand off any Magellan dealer. You can probably just ring them up and I'll send it out here. We have then the base of the altar, 36524, added to, that's 100 years, added to the 2300 days of Daniel. It gives you my birth date. Add the 70 weeks of representing years of 360 or 69 in Gregorian calendar year. So you wanted to mention a little bit about um, what's happening. Oh, oh, just the latest. There's speculation about where the uh, rulers actually are. There's no schedule for the White House, for Obama or, or any of the politicians in the White House. People, leaders from all around the globe have been cancelling meetings between each other, meetings between nations. Um, China Airlines, 52,000 seats have been cancelled. So something's up. Uh, for the month of October. Japan Airlines, huh? Yeah, yeah chi well, Chinese Airlines and oh, Japan. Yeah. Oh, it, it's all over the place. There's quite a bit of I've warned these people, there. if they go underground, I'll be killed. Yes. Right, so there's, uh, there's there $43 trillion worth of tunnels underneath the United States alone. Now, they're all going underground, so they will be killed. If they, will if they war too. I'm warning them now, right, they will kill you. Now, the point being, is that I've already told Obama when he was going to go underground in Denver that they will burn him and his family right before his eyes. They'll do the most atrocities because there's people that were in the tenth layer down that got out of there terrified by what they'd seen installed. That was something dreadful that's going to happen. Those people going there. Mm. That'd be the lower part of hell, wouldn't it? Oh. So they can repent, do the right thing. 
And all, the whole world's been bullshitted, so I'm prepared to forgive them. But I'm also for, prepared to uh, give them a worse treatment than that. Because as soon as I get into there and they are, they will be destroyed. And I'd like to remind you all that the two CIA tunnels that blew up over 100 miles long, it was pressurised to a point which is something they have never been able to figure out. Because I did it. The, uh, these underground um, CIA bases, if you like, where they were storing all their equipment, um, is to re uh, resist a atomic blast, a nuclear bomb, and the doors itself will resist that. But what they didn't design it for is to resist the pressure building up inside. And it built up to 19.7 um, atmospheres, which happened to be my name in Gematria, and then blew the doors out. Now, what happened then? All the rock and all of the equipment, everything, when it was pressurised to that vast pressure and then suddenly released, it turned to dust. So, if they're that dumb, well... They've been warned. I'd, I'd, get, a, a, I'd get a Polaroid and take a photograph of your backside because you can kiss your ass goodbye. Mm. There is a profit there, isn't there? What, kissing your ass goodbye? <laughs> no, about being ground to powder. Well, there is. Yeah. Mm. Everything but ground to powder. It, well, it's, it's returning the, uh, re the um, stone the bill is rejected. Anyone who, who uh, comes up against him, uh, he, will be ground, he will grind them to powder. Mm. And I will. I won't enjoy it, but I will do it. All right, I've got to turn this thing off now.